look up a little more on I'm just saying. I'm just saying me, it's an informal word used when you are making a criticism or complaint to make it less likely to offend someone. So most of you see it like when I'm on Facebook or some people say what they gotta say, then they can put IJS by it. I'm just saying. So they're, they're trying to lessen really how they feel. So they put I soften the blow. Very good. Yeah, say soften the blow. Soften the blow. It also says the irrefutable way to diffuse any situation saying I'm just saying is to be used immediately after a burn or after a distasteful opinion is given. So everybody say I'm just saying. I'm just saying. IJS. Okay, so we're going to go over that teaching today because I want to close it out today. Uh, we're going to open up with Mark eleven twenty two through 25. Amen? Amen. Praise Mark the 11th chapter, beginning verse 22 through 25. And Father, we just thank you for your word today. We thank you that everyone that will watch this will be challenged and, and changed by your word today because your word never returns to you, boy. So we ask that you would challenge us today to do better and to speak better and to watch what we're saying in Jesus' name. So our thought for today is I'm just saying, but my question and my challenge to you today is what are you saying? Say, what am I saying? What am I saying? And our scripture reference for this morning will be from Mark the 11th chapter beginning at verse 22. It says, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. And I love that in verse 23, it talks about say and say it three times. Listen, but maybe more than that, four times. It says, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, everybody say say, say. unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says, they says, say. shall come to pass. Whatever you say is what's gonna come to pass. If you speak life over yourself, you're gonna get life. If you speak death over yourself, you're going to get death. We have to, as believers, we have to really, really put a watch and a guard over what we say. Come on now. Amen. Amen. And I'm not saying that you're going to go to hell because you say the wrong thing. I'm not going to say you're... But what happens is you defeat yourself. You're saying the right thing to better your life. Come on. Yeah. You're saying the right thing to better your situation. Amen. Amen. If, 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 you, if I say the wrong thing, it's not going to hurt Sister Beverly. Uh -huh. It's going to hurt me. Right. Amen. So I want to challenge us to watch what we say. Turn to us and say, watch what you say. Watch what you say. Verse 23, it says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And mountains can be symbolic of hard things in our life. Yeah. What are we saying over the hard challenges that we go through in our life? What are you saying over it? What are you saying over the toothache? Are you saying, oh, my tooth hurts so bad, I ain't going to feel no better. No, you pray, you spoke life, and healing comes. What are you saying? What are you saying when your money is funny and your change is strange? What are you saying when you when you when you're going through? What are you saying? And I say when you don't when your uh, your money's a little low, say I'm between blessings. Amen. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. You can't. The doubt might get in your head, Sister Juanita, but you can't let the doubt in your heart. We gotta keep. We gotta stay full of faith. Stay full of faith. Hallelujah. But shall believe those things which he says shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he says if you say the joy of the Lord is my strength and I'm full of joy even when it looks like a natural strength you're depleted of joy that joy has got to catch up to what you say because we have what we say say I have what I say whether it's good or bad you have what you say if you say I'm catching a cold, look out for it. Prepare for the for cold to come because you just brought that cold to yourself. Mm -hmm. Say blessings chase me down. Those blessings will chase you down. Yes. Say even in the midst of being uh, going through a health challenge, say confess I'm getting better and better and stronger and stronger each day. And better and better and stronger and stronger is going to catch up to your physical body. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are, I'm going to take a sidebar. We are powerful beings. Not because I'm so powerful or I'm so wonderful, but we're powerful because of who lies on the inside of us. Do you realize who's on the inside of you? The word says, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. It says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Jesus lives in you. His anointing lives in you. His power lives in you. Do you realize that when you pray for someone, things I expect people to be healed. If I pray for you, I expect you to feel better. I expect you to do better. 
Amen? Amen. Because we are people of faith. Yes. If you, you're praying on the prayer line five days a week, you should expect the signs and the wonders and the miracles of God. You should expect testimonies. When you come here on a Saturday night or Saturday night or Sunday morning, I expect to hear good testimonies. I expect for you to get good jobs. I expect for you to get permanent jobs. I expect not because of Pastor Mark, but because of our great God. The God that's able to do according to Ephesians 3.20 that says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or imagine, but it's according to the power or the faith that works in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't have to settle for second, third, or fourth best. We don't have to settle. You might have to wait. Say, I might have to wait, but I don't have to settle. If you believe that, put those hands together and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Verse 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire. I'm in Mark 11, 22. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray. How many people have some desires today? There's some things you believe in God for. There's some things you want to see manifest. The word says, and this is Jesus speaking. He says, therefore, I say unto you. This is like you, you, this is like you sit, having a seat and Jesus sitting across from you. Yes. One on one. It says, therefore, I say unto you, what things, so ever you desire, whatever your requests are, whatever you're believing me to do, Sister, uh, Sister Gwen, what things, so ever you desire, whatever things you want. When you pray, do what? Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. I was watching someone this morning. He's really good. You know, he, he's, got a, uh, he's deceased now. But I was watching Dwayne, Dwayne Dyer this morning. I was up since 3.30 this morning. But he was saying some good things, some good principles. And he was saying, whatever you're believing God for, call that thing and see, your, see yourself at the end. See, you can listen to all kinds of people, but you got to have enough God in you to bring everything into balance. Say balance. Balance. Amen. balance. Say balance. balance. So he said, see yourself at the end. So he said, if you believe in God for a car, see yourself in that car. See yourself driving that car. Put that car on the refrigerator. Put, put, see yourself in it. See the end result. He said, if you want to lose weight, you want to lose 20 pounds, see yourself in that size 14. You got to put some of that Pepsi and Coke away now. <laughs> you got to work with God. But in essence, it's faith. Uh -huh. Amen. See yourself in it. Believe, it ties in with that. Believe that you receive it and you shall have it. So see yourself. If you want to be uh, healthier, you want to be, you, you believe in God for healing, see yourself healed. I remember prophesying to Novella years ago, uh, years ago, when she was going through a health challenge. And I said, Novella, I said, you're going to drive again. And I said, you're going to come up. We were upstairs in the upper room in Plainfield before. I said, you're going to drive again. And she said, I am. Because sometimes you got to put faith in people. you got to stir people's faith where they don't even have it at that time. you got to stand in the gap. And I'm telling you, she's, she's having a birthday this week. We gave her some beautiful flowers. And she's still driving. And she ain't driving no prayer mobile. She got a beautiful car outside. Amen. Thank you. That's what God will do. That's why I'm telling y'all, and I'm not saying it for here. I'm telling you to put in your spirit. That's why it's vital that you got to watch where you sit. You have to watch what you're under. Are you sitting under a ministry that they really don't want to see you go nowhere? They don't really don't want to see you progress. They hate on you when you came through the door. You got to really watch what you sit under. Are you under life or are you under death or are you under tradition? Are you under religion? Are you under someone that's going to push you into purpose and push, push you into destiny and put spark faith in you? Novella looks wonderful. She's been with me a long time and she's celebrating the birthday this week and I'm, she's still driving. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. It doesn't matter where you are. See yourself wherever you're believing God for. See yourself there. Thank you, Father. You say, I'm believing God for a house. See yourself in that house. Start getting some pictures of houses and put them around. You want a condo, start seeing yourself and then start working towards it. I'm trying to help y'all this morning. Verse 24, I'm going to say it again. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive. Everybody shall forgive. forgive. We always want to make sure people have done things, said things against us, but we have to 
Stay in a place of forgiveness. Say forgive. forgive. And sometimes it's challenging to forgive because we've been hurt. But we have God will never ask you to do something and then not help you or give you the strength Amen. to do it. Right. Amen. Amen. So when you want, it may take a little while to get there. You, you be like, Lord, I'm not there yet. But he's okay. He's patient. He's long-suffering. He's kind. He's gentle. He'll help you to get there. Verse 25 says, and when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So I just want to end this message today uh about I'm just saying, what are you saying? What are you releasing? And like I said, it's not so much for someone else, but it's what you're saying. What are you declaring? What are you decreeing? What are you believing over your, yourself? And sometimes you have to say the right thing and believe the right thing a long time before it manifests, uh -huh. before it happens. But if you believe God wants you to have it, and something else he said this morning that really blessed me. He said, if, um, it was so good, I've been up since 3.30, but in essence he was saying, if you feel like a tug for something, for like something in your purpose or something in your ministry, and you keep hearing the school, hearing the school, he said that, he said, what you're hearing is trying to pull you into that thing so you can line yourself up with it. Yeah. So if that ministry's in you, it's like you may be discouraged and ministry might not be happening the way you want it to happen, but you're like, I keep feeling this ministry. I keep feeling this tug. I got to get to North. I got to get out there and feed those people. I got to find some clothes. That's that, that's that spirit of God. That's what God wants you to, to have. It's pulling you to destiny. It's pulling you into that person. It's saying, come on, Faye. You can do it. Come on, Faye. You can do the school. Come on, Faye. You can do those prayer summers. Come on, Faye. You can do it's that. It's the thing on the inside that's pulling you to it like a magnet. You know, y'all getting it? You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm excited. <laughs> what are you saying? Yeah. Proverbs 18:21 says, "Death and life yeah. are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof." We want to be Christians and believers who say what God's word says. Amen. And we need to challenge one another. When someone says, "Oh, I'm sick and tired," you need to say, "You want me to agree with that?" Because if you touch and agree anything, you gonna have it. <laughs> oh. That's good. I'm broke. You want me to agree with that? No, I, no, I can't. And you got to break the power of those words. Stop saying the wrong thing. It's easy to say the right thing while you're in church. But the real test is when you're home, when you don't have the praise and worship music, when you don't have Pastor Mark on the mic prophesy. The real test is how you, what you're going to say when you get home. When the hellhounds are out and it's, it's, it's challenging and you're in that rough place and it's hard, what are you going to say when the pressure comes? Hallelujah. Okay, let me get to my points where I don't finish today. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to go over. I did the other five, but I'm going to go over five, the five points real quick, and then I'm going to give the other five. Number, number one, ten things we don't want to say and ten things we do want to say. Number one, we don't want to say, I'm just reviewing, we don't want to say I'm broke, busted, and disgusted. I don't have any money. But we do want to say Philippians 4.19, that's our scripture. But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Number two. We don't want to say I'm sick, oppressed, depressed, hurt, pains, and I don't feel well. The more you say you're sick, the sicker you will feel. The more, uh, we want to say I'm getting better and better and stronger and stronger each day. We do want to say by his stripes I'm healed, Isaiah 53 and 5, that he was wounded for our transgressions, Hallelujah. he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We also want to say that this is wonderful. Listen to this, Psalm 103, 1 through 5. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies, satisfies thy mouth with good things. We serve a good God, and he wants to satisfy his children's mouths and their lives with good things. I can't get no good amen. Say we serve a good God. And my good God wants to satisfy, satisfy my mouth and my life with good things. God is not putting sickness, disease, and drama on you to teach you a lesson. The devil is a liar. Amen. That was Psalm 103. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. I'm praying that the Lord will continue to renew my youth like the eagles. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three. We don't want to say I'm sick and tired or, or being tired. I'm tired or I'm sick and tired of being tired. We want to say Galatians 6, 9. It says, and let us not be weary 
and well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. We don't want to confess, I have no joy, but we want to confess, Nehemiah 8.10, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. We don't want to confess we don't have any peace because the Prince of Peace wants you to say. Let's say this. Let's say this. Say the Prince of Peace, the Prince of peace wants, me wants me to have peace, to have peace and, live in peace. and live in peace. Now we have some bumps in the road and we have some challenges, but it's God's ultimate purpose. He died that we might have peace, that we might have joy, that we might have everything that pertains to life and godliness. It's not God's will that we be miserable. I'm telling y'all. You might have to cut some people out of your life that are pulling you down or, or that's bringing misery or drama. You have to do that. The word tells us to lay aside every weight and a sin. God ain't going to take them away. You got to lay it down. You got to stop answering the texts. You got to stop answering the emails. You got to delete them from Facebook. If they're causing you drama, you got to love yourself enough to say, you know what? This is a waste of my time. I'm going to shake this mess off. And let me tell you something. Sometimes when you get people out of your life, don't broadcast it. I want to say it the way I want to say it. I'm going to say it. Just phase your tail out. You don't owe nobody no explanation. If it's drama, just phase your tail right on out. Because sometimes you try to phase out Sabrina, and they're like, well, why are you letting me go? Why well, can't come over? Why well, can't I ain't doing all that? It's not healthy. It's not helping me. It's not beneficial. So I'm phasing out by. See, you don't want to be you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, this all this comes as a place of loving yourself enough that you only want in your life what's healthy. It's called making healthy choices. It's not about the. And you can tell, you know, if you have to, but it's really not about them. It's about loving yourself enough to make healthy choices. And if it's not healthy, you phase out. That's right. Break it down. I'm not going back. So you, we ain't got to go back and forth. I'm just not responding. And if you got to change your number, change your number. Amen. Sometimes you got to do that. You know, if it's, you have to do what you got to do. Look, do whatever it takes to be free. Amen. And you got, in order for your freedom, you have, I'm going to tell you this, this is 99% of the victory right there. You have to be free from people's opinions. If you're not free from people's opinions, you won't walk in that freedom. And sometimes it got, it's going to be family, family opinions, friends' opinions, peers, it don't even matter. All right, I'm moving on. Number six, stop saying I can't. When Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ with strength of me. Don't say I can't. Say that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Number seven, don't say I'm lonely. I love in the talk show we had last week, and um, my brother, brother, Minister Moses said we have moments of loneliness. So, I mean, you might have a little moment of loneliness, but we don't confess we're lonely. We thank you. We say, Lord, we thank you that you fill every void and meet every need in my life. And, and that, Lord, I thank you that if you want somebody in your life, that he'll send the right person, that God will send the right person. And if you're content with being by yourself, be by yourself. Be you and Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. Right. Thank you on the front row. Thank you, sister. <laughs> <Bell. laughs> and that's what I'm getting ready to read. Amen. Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conversation be without co covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake you. The Lord is the only one that promised he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Right. Right. Man, a woman said, oh, you look so good. I ain't never going to leave you. And they gone in the midnight season. Amen. But God is the only one that will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Number eight. Moving right along. We don't want to gossip. Say no gossip. No gossip. Ephesians 4.29 says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. That's right. I got to stay right there for church people because church people love to talk. <laughs> church people like to give you their opinion. Yeah. They love to say, I'm just saying after they say what they had to say. But Ephesians 4.29, don't get mad at me. Get mad at the word. It says, do not let any. Everybody say any. any. Everybody say help me. We all need help in that area. Say help, help, help. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs. Now, that's good. I'm going to read it again. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only that it, only what is helpful for building others up. And that's what we should always be doing, building other people up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. James 1.26, those who consider themselves religious... And yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues, deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Amen. Well, <laughs> James 1.26, NIV. 
James 4.11, brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or a sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 11.13, a gossip betrays a confidence. But a trustworthy person keeps a secret. If you're trustworthy, you will keep a secret. Can you keep a secret? Yes. Yeah. I've had many people come back to me and say, Pastor Mark, thank you for, you know, when I was in the larger church, I said, thank you because I came to you and I never heard it. And if you come to me, you're not going to hear it. Amen. That's how we should be. If you can't go to nobody else, there should be a brother or sister in the Lord that you should be able to go to in confidence and never hear it again. And if you need that person, God will send that person to your life. He'll show you. Now, I'm going to give you a little hint. If you see somebody always running their mouth, well, always telling you stuff and say, well, you know, they told me not to tell about it, but I'm just going to tell you. You better know you don't confide in that one because if they're telling you somebody else's business, when they said don't tell you, they're going to tell yours when you ain't around. But you want someone that has a quiet spirit. Someone that your spirit will let you know. I remember years ago, I was going to confide in a family member. And, and my spirit of the Lord was like, mm, mm, mm. and I didn't know because you know you excited, you're like, oh yeah, yeah. And then later on, I said, okay, I saw God. He'll he'll he'll, he'll block you. You'll feel the you feel the brakes. When you feel them brakes, you better hold on to them brakes. Proverbs eleven thirteen: A gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep confidence. Amen. Amen. Proverbs eighteen eight: The words of gossip are like choice morsels; they go down to the innermost parts. That's good. So we don't want to be people that gossip. Amen? Amen. Amen. People say, you know how they gossip? Oh, we got to pray. Sister Stephanie, we got to pray for so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so and they just tell you all the stuff. All of you. You never get to pray. They just, they just want to spiritualize the gossip. Amen? <laughs> Number nine, don't speak death. We have to watch this. Don't speak death. Speak life over yourselves. Proverbs 18.21 says, the tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. And I want to really encourage you. Uh, sometimes we can speak life over our speak uh, death over ourselves. When you don't speak death, don't murmur and complain. Don't say I can't remember. I, I can't remember anything. Don't say that stuff over yourself. Don't say I can't. Oh, I can't. I'm getting old. I can't. I just can't remember. You better say the Holy Ghost brings all things back to my remembrance. Because the more you say I can't remember nothing, the more you will, the spirit of forgetfulness will lay on your head. Amen. Don't say I'm forgetful. That's right. That's right. Don't say I'll never have this or that. Right. Don't say I'll never have a job. Don't speak the problem. Speak the answer. Right. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need a job, don't say I will never find a job. Say I thank you, Lord, that you lead me to that job. Yes. That I have favor with God and favor with man in Jesus' name. Amen. What things soever you desire, believe you receive it and you shall have it. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we put ourselves down. Don't put yourselves down. Mothers and fathers, when you're angry, don't put your children down to your grandchildren, your family. So don't put them down. Just you go in time out. That's good. Yeah, when you go, when you're a little down, your parents, you go in time out. Go sit down. Put on some worship music and get yourself together. Amen. Because you you want to speak life over your marriages. You want to speak life over you as being so You want to speak life over your kids. You don't want me to say, oh, you just like your never had old dad. He want nothing. You know, don't say that stuff. Oh, yeah. right. Words are containers. That's right. Thank Watch you. what you say. Speak life over them. Amen? Amen. All right. Number 10, my, and I'm closing. Do it all by faith. This is a faith walk. Yeah. Everything I'm giving you, we have to do it by faith. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Yeah. Matthew 17, 20 says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, mustard seed is the smallest seed ever. That's the smallest seed is a mustard seed. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. I want you to know that we are people where we are people of impossibilities. Because of who's in us, we can do the impossible. Say, I can do the impossible. We got to get out of this small level, and we got to allow God to stretch us. We had Cassandra here last night testified about her job. And me calling her and how she got the job the next day. And she was saying, it's hard. 
And she was saying, there's new things that I'm learning that I don't, didn't know or, or don't, didn't understand. I said, that's good because God is stretching you. Because every problem or hard situation or job, somebody know how to help you to get you there. Amen. Amen. So you got to be stretched. It's good to be stretched. It's good to look at things and do things bigger than you. That's when you know you got to trust God to bring it to pass. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and challenges and stuff that they, they'll cause you to, to, to press into God more. Amen? Yes, yes. Glory. Matthew 17, 20 from the New Living says, You don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you the truth, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing would be impossible. I want you to know this morning that nothing is impossible. Even when things look impossible, Sabrina, we serve a God. It says in Ephesians 3, 20, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding. Yeah. Abundantly, yes. above all that we ask, think, or imagine according to the power that works in us. I want you to know as we're here this weekend for our empowerment weekend services that, that you're not just not here to take a seat, but you're here so God can stretch you. You're here so you can do new things, so you can step into new waters, that you can step into new territories. You know, if God, he gave you another, uh, another year novella, it's for you to press into God even the more. To pray for more people, right. to stand in the gap for more people, right. to help more. If God's given us all life, it's with a purpose. Yes. Amen. It's not just to sit around and watch TV. Mm. Amen. Amen. We do it all by faith. Uh, Hebrews eleven six. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I want us to be men and women that diligently seek God. Amen. Hallelujah. And my last scripture, James 1, 1 through 6. This is so good. James, the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith. How many people, all of our faith at one time, it gets tried. But the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. If you need wisdom, ask of God. They give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. And I don't have it here, but it says, let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We don't want to be double-minded. I don't want to see faith in church that I go out and cancel it with, net, with, with uh, doubt and unbelief. Or fear. I'm like, oh, I believe God, I believe God. Then, then when, when challenges come, we, 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 we draw back. No, we want to be men of people of faith while we're in, in church, men of people of faith while we're in school, believe in God while we're in shop, right? Wherever we are, just continue to believe God. And if you're having a little low day, just don't say nothing. Yeah. Don't say nothing. Just talk to God. <laughs> Amen. The most challenging thing to do is not what is not to know what to do, it's just to do it. But if we're going to see change or breakthrough in our lives, we have to become doers of the word. And not hear us only. As Christians, we're to be light. We're to shine. We're to be different. Let people see and feel hope and joy when you walk into the room or into a dark place. When you come into the room, there should be a difference. Because you're a believer. Because light is upon you. When, when I walk into a room or I walk into a service, I want something to happen because I'm in the room. I want something to shift. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. I'm through.